looking at this, you might be mistaken to think this is a very, very badly milled piece of aluminum ill-fitting to another piece of aluminum ill-fitting to a 3D printed part. That is actually quite correct because I suck at milling, but as you might be able to see, I have a piece of glassware with a stir rod in it. And when I now turn on the power, the stir bar starts rotating. This is a tiny side project of mine. I've been talking about it uh, for a while on the Science Madness forums, which is a uh, like a chemistry enthusiast type forum. I, I would really like to do some chemistry, but a lot of uh, hot plate stirrers, a central uh, piece of equipment to any kind of chemistry, be it organic or inorganic. Uh, hot plate stirrers tend to be pretty expensive and the cheap ones are still not very cheap. It's like a hundred bucks for a very low end hot plate stirrer from China. Uh, so you can only heat very small things like this tiny, tiny little beaker. Stirrers aren't that good and it's all a bit crappy, but most importantly, there are a few very, very high-end stirrers that have wireless capabilities, but the vast majority are just like a plate with a knob on it that makes it go faster and less fast, and a knob on it that makes it go hotter. Usually not really a good display either. It's like you have to kind of tweak it and hope that it's the right temperature. And uh, that's it. And that might be okay for a lab which has an actual lab technician running around and doing stuff. But for me, I want to be able to do relatively dangerous chemistry work locked away in my garage or uh, when I'm at the hackerspace in the fume cupboard and doing its thing and just being able to over Wi-Fi like anything else in my workflow. My, my X-Carve, my 3D printer, everything in my uh, lab can be controlled over Wi-Fi. So why can't I buy a just decently priced, I'm not going to spend 500 or a thousand on something with that capability. So long story short, I built one myself and I'm going to show you how. Now, aside from that, there's also just a little bit of the challenge of building something like this. Uh, I really like uh, integral system design and in this case, well, it went a bit poorly, as you can see. Uh, the, the milling didn't go well. This, um, the stirrer is made from three parts, a uh, 3D printer. This is just like a, uh, a little top uh, that protects the electronics. Uh, this, this here is a button and two LED ports. And then the middle piece kind of has, uh, does heat sinking for the main power components. And the top uh, is, well, the, the part that has chemicals dripping on it, pretty much. And then there's a standard M10 screw thread here. Obviously, my, my only CNC machine is an X-Carve. Uh, it went pretty well, but uh, it can only go up to depth, uh, depths of uh, 11 millimeters. And I, I kind of nudged the machine, I guess, halfway through. So there was a couple of steps. And the last bit here, uh, I actually finished by hand. So that's why it looks so incredibly rough. Uh, obviously, this is not how a finished product sh should look, but it's good enough for me. It's serviceable. So uh, let's have a look inside and see what a stirrer is. By the way, this is not a hot plate yet. Uh, there will be a separate hot plate project, but I thought, well, the stirrer part is kind of, uh, it's a bit harder to do. Like a hot plate is just a couple of resistors and a bit big aluminum plate. That's easy to do, but a stirrer, I'm not sure if that's gonna work. So I started out with the more complicated thing. Here we have the entire unit disassembled. Um, first of all, I just want to uh, point out the integration design because I just I just like doing this kind of stuff. The whole assembly is only held together by these two screws, these uh, nylon screws. And this basically compresses uh, this aluminum part with the main electronics on it between this and that. If we zoom into the actual electronics part, so what you can see here is, uh, this is uh, a suggestion I got from the Science Madness forums. What a magnetic stirrer is, well, 
there are two ways of making a, a magnetic stirrer. You can either take a computer fan and put two neodymium magnets on it. Uh, the other way is to uh, make the magnetic field using solenoids. And the cool thing is, uh, solenoids, they, they sell them under a slightly different name. They're called inductors, uh, specifically these open-ended inductors. These are very good solenoids. The core inside uh, amplifies the magnetic field significantly. And, well, how do you drive this? Because what you kind of want is the north pole to rotate and then the south pole to have the same direction of rotation, but then 180 degrees separated. So the cool thing is that kind of motion is exactly the same thing you do in stepper motors. So in order to drive these electromagnets, you use a stepper motor driver. In this case, the Allegro A4988, I think, or 4983, uh, either of those. This is all that does the, steer, uh, the stirring. The rest of the circuit board is, well, obviously we have an ESP8266 Wi-Fi module. This is also the brains of the operation, it runs a little Lua script that uh, steps the stepper motor driver and uh, gets the inputs. You can push on the button to make it go faster and you can do long presses to make it stir harder. And then this is just, uh, I think, up to 24 volts to 3.3 volts power supply for the ESP8266 and the accompanying uh, electronics, as well as like a uh, logic voltage for the uh, stepper driver. So it's a, it's a very simple PCB. These inductors, they sit in these cavities that are milled out. Uh, again, yeah, the X-Carve isn't great at machining this kind of stuff. It took forever, and I had a lot of um, failed attempts for various reasons. This was actually a, a clamping issue. And this very good-looking piece was completely correct. I, I even tapped the holes and then I found out that it was too small for some reason. <laughs> I, I misskilled it. So uh, this was painful. It took like a couple of hours to make because I took it really slow to make it and make it look nice. And then it turned out to be the wrong size. So <laughs> here's the actual PCB as I get it. And the um, PCB, I, I did some preliminary integration work, I guess, on it. So one of the things I'm always having issues with when I design a multi-PCB product, I always have to put on connectors and then build wires to connect all the PCBs. And uh, that's just a pain to do. So what I did here is I uh, connected, basically connected all the PCBs uh, with pre-made wires. So these little boards, these are cutoff boards or I guess snap off boards. You can just bend the PCB and snap snap it off here and here. These are called mouse bites. And the lines are already pre-drawn. So what I can do is I can assemble this whole thing and immediately test it without having to make wires and making mistakes when making those wires. And uh, it works. And the same is, goes for here. This is a little PCB, it's, uh, like this, that uh, just has an FT231X uh, USB to serial chip on it. And uh, because the ESP8266 is programmed through RS-232, or actually through like a TTL uh, serial port, uh, you need this converter to use it on USB because no computer has a serial port anymore. So I just built this PCB that can snap off. Obviously it doesn't actually fit in the enclosure. So I have to snap it off and put on a header. But like during the initial buildup of the prototype, I could just keep it connected and um, just solder on the uh, little USB port. And this flex is enough that the cable can go, like I can actually plug it in and the cable just goes uh, on top of this. So it works perfectly. And uh, use this setup to test. And this time everything just worked immediately. 
I could go ahead and assemble the little thing. Now, as far as functionality goes, uh, it's not quite done yet. So currently, uh, there is no web interface for this. Obviously, there will be in the future. The only thing you can really do is adjust the stirring speed. So you can press the button and you see the LED blinking faster and faster and faster. And then eventually, I think after this one, yeah, going to the slowest mode, it just cycles through the uh, different speed settings. Uh, that's not quite final yet. Uh, you can also do long presses and you see this LED here dimming a bit and then becoming a bit brighter. And there we go. We cycle through that as well. That's the stirring strength indication. Uh, so that basically increases the current, increases or decreases the current uh, set point for the driver and increases the current going through the coils and thus the, uh, the strength. This is handy because at present it gets a little bit warm. It gets to like 30, 35 degrees C and it's like 17 here in the room. So if you really have a temperature sensitive chemical reaction going on, then you can put the stirring to lower strength and uh, make sure it doesn't heat up as much. So this was uh, my stirrer project. I will be using this in upcoming chemistry videos. I'm not sure when those will air. And I will also be continuing the development on this project and the associated uh, hot plate project. So current issues with this iteration are that it's still a little bit weak. It's good enough for the uh, for like the, the small stir bars, but when you get up to the, the large size, this is a 34 millimeter, kind of a standard size stir bar. And if you get up to like the really, really honking big ones, like this giant 55 millimeters, I think, stir bar, uh, it's it's just not not super strong anymore and what I did is I had a prototype set up just with a um, uh, standard a 4988 step promoter driver and these these really big inductors and this actually did the job very well so what I'm thinking of doing is uh, scaling up the operation and uh, making a design that uses these instead of the uh, the smaller like these inductors are <laughs> absolutely tiny in comparison so the the magnetic field generated by these is just so much larger than these so uh, I'll probably try a second iteration that is just larger pretty much when oh, also uh, what I can really see happening here is that the magnetic field coming from this if you can imagine the field lines, they, they kind of go like that when it's active. And that means that, I guess maybe that is the actual reason why larger stir bars don't work because the large stir bar, yeah, so the large stir bar is significantly larger than the entire stirrer. So maybe just putting them farther out uh, would be enough. And the unit is super tiny as it is anyway, so I can afford to make it bigger. So that's uh, that's probably the next iteration. You'll uh, you'll see the next uh, one in some upcoming video, and I will probably be using this exact stir for uh, chemistry projects. I'm also hoping to um, send out a couple of units uh, as this project matures to people of an actual lab, probably people from uh, Science Madness forums, and uh, just to to try it out to see how it works in like an actual lab setting instead of in my home chemistry botch setup. So hope you liked the video and I'll see you the next time.